don't know about you, but the last few years, and especially this year, it's felt like the climate crisis has really been making a splash. The impacts seem bigger, more catastrophic, and more widespread than ever. For one thing, I'm recording this in the longest, hottest UK September heatwave on record. In this environment, I think we'd all be forgiven for feeling like the pace of climate change is accelerating. But is it? I'm Ella, a polar scientist with a PhD in Antarctic climate change. And in this video, I'm going to show you that while climate is changing pretty much exactly how we predicted it would happen, climate impacts are hitting harder than we thought. Where do we start with 2023? It's been wild. It's been the hottest June, July, August recorded in history, and the extremes have been extremely extreme. There were record smashing heat waves in China, in Chile, in the southern US, in Mexico, and in southern Europe. There were mega wildfires in Canada, America, Greece, and Hawaii. There have been floods in India, Hong Kong, Eastern Europe, and Greece again, just a month after the craziest heat imaginable. Meanwhile, global ocean surface temperatures are off the chain and Antarctic sea ice extent was lower than it's been in a really, really long time. But I feel like a broken record because every year temperature records are tumbling around our ears. And we better get used to that because this is record breaking heat now, but give it a decade or two and this will just be normal. Or, you know, we could do something about it. It might seem from all of these extremes that climate change is putting the pedal to the metal. We know that human activity is raising global average temperatures. Hotter average global temperatures amplify extremes and the 1.2 degrees Celsius of warming we've already seen has made events more severe, more frequent and more prolonged. But on top of that, there are two aggravating factors that have made this year especially intense. Part of the reason that 2023 has been so hot is because of a natural cycle called ENSO, or the El Nino Southern Oscillation. It's a pattern of warmer tropical Pacific sea surface temperatures that is global consequences, tending to push global average temperatures upwards and impacting weather patterns across the world. In fact, if you've seen any graphs that look like this floating around, this is what's behind it. The fact that global sea surface temperatures are so high are partly an indication that El Nino is going on. El Nino's impacts are added on top of the background climate trend. El Nino typically adds around 0.2 degrees to the global average, so add that on top of the one and a bit degrees of warming we've already witnessed, and you can see why scientists have said that there's a strong likelihood that in the next five years or so will temporarily exceed the one and a half degree limit set out in the Paris Agreement. El Nino was declared in July and is already sending temperatures soaring. But El Nino's effects are usually higher the year after it develops, so 2024 is going to be even worse. Hold on to your hats. While we're talking about natural factors that have influenced this year's extremes, I've got to talk about Hunga Tonga. In early 2022, the underwater volcanic eruption spewed vast quantities of soot, sulfur dioxide and crucially water vapour into the stratosphere. Most volcanoes have a cooling effect because the masking effects of these particles typically reflect sunlight back to space, but Hunga Tonga was different. Water vapour is a strong greenhouse gas, and so the eruption actually increased global temperatures. But sorry to anyone hoping this can explain the record heat, the impact of Hunga Tonga is likely too small to make a real difference to global average temperatures, adding at most just 0.035 degrees C. As the lead author of this article on the topic said to Carbon Brief, we will not see the impact of Tonga on climate change events like droughts or floods. The effect is simply too small. So while natural factors are amplifying the extremes of 2023, the main culprit here is definitely human-caused climate change. Even once we take the aggravating effects of El Nino and Hunga Tonga into account, it might seem from all of these extremes that climate change is getting ahead of our predictions, or even that we've crossed some kind of tipping point. But global average temperature rise is tracking along with our expectations given the rate we're chucking greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And along with rising temperatures come extreme events and record-breaking heat. The number and severity of these events are on the higher end of the predicted range, partly because the models we use to predict the future often underestimate extremes. Research shows that more sophisticated models capable of capturing current extreme conditions with more detail and granularity, they tend to predict a number and intensity of extremes that are much closer to what plays out in the real world. So the pace of change and the number of climate fueled extreme events isn't necessarily catching science off guard. It may just be on the high end of what we might expect. 
It also feels like there's been what Catherine Hayhoe called a tipping point in global consciousness. Now extremes are impacting all of us in our everyday lives, no matter where we live, it may feel like we've reached some kind of critical threshold. But for now, that's the only tipping point that we've reached. Because there's no evidence yet that we've entered a new physical regime, which makes the prospect of actually crossing tipping thresholds even scarier. What most climate scientists agree on is that while temperature change and the increased number of extremes are broadly in line with predictions, the impacts of these events are much greater than anyone feared. More people are being exposed to catastrophe and the effects of weather extremes are overlapping and multiplying in ways that were not expected. In a Guardian feature that interviewed many climate scientists about this, there were a few standout quotes from people who work on this subject. The impacts are frighteningly more impactful than I and many climate scientists I know expected. Our vulnerability is smacking us in the face. The impacts of extremes aren't just about how extreme the physical event is, it's about how it interacts with human lives and the environment. Extremes are likely to have a more devastating effect if the communities dealing with them have fewer resources to prepare in advance or cope with the aftermath. They're also more likely to have worse consequences if people and the environment are chronically stressed, for example by poverty, environmental degradation or an unstable political situation. And when extremes start happening in quick succession, like we saw with the heat wave and then floods in Pakistan during 2022, or in Greece this year with the heat wave, wildfire and then floods, that reduces people's ability to deal with the problem and amplifies the impacts. People working on climate have been warning about this precise problem for decades. Often, the people who are least responsible for causing the problem are worst affected, whilst those with more historical responsibility for creating the crisis, like me in the UK for example, suffer relatively less. It's why any solutions to climate change have to have equity built into them. We can't expect people who've been screwed over by many centuries of inequality to shoulder the burden of fighting the climate crisis alone. To deal with the constantly upticking number of climate change fueled extreme events, we need two things. First, we need to stop adding fuel to the fire by urgently decarbonizing our economies and weaning ourselves off fossil fuels. And second, we need to adapt to a new world in a way that recognizes who is feeling the worst effects of extremes and who's responsible. That's basically the premise of the loss and damage fund that was discussed at last year's COP climate summit, and which will definitely be a topic of conversation at the next one in November. So what have we learned? Although it does kind of feel like it sometimes, the pace of climate change isn't accelerating. It's actually happening at pretty much exactly the rate we expect. The number of extreme events we are seeing is also still in line with predictions, although possibly on the higher end of the scale. And then natural factors like our old mate El Nino simply stack heat on top of an already large climate warming signal. What isn't in line with predictions are the impacts. The impacts of climate change are way more damaging than we thought because our societies and infrastructure are more vulnerable than we realised. And the causes of that are less physical and more social, which means that the solutions have to be social too. Equity is central to fighting climate change. You can't fix a global problem by solving it only for some people. Climate action has to be for everyone. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video and enjoyed the fact that there were no adverts, maybe you'd like to support me on Patreon. I fund these videos entirely with the help of my awesome subscribers. So head over to the link in the description if you'd like to join them. Ciao for now.